Welcome back to ShiftCast. You're watching a segment of the full episode. If you want to catch the full episode, you can check it in the live tab of our YouTube channel or on Spotify. Uh, leave a rating while you're at it. Drop us, uh, drop us your rating on Spotify, but let's get right into it. South America, uh, there was actually a little event, and I unfortunately was not able to catch any of it. I had some stuff going on, but there's the Duds Challenge Season 1 off-season tournament down there in, in South America, and Complexity Fall to Erased and Furia in that event. Um, after picking up Diaz, which I think a lot of people look at as a, a move to potentially raise that ceiling, maybe pop them into the top eight um, internationally. Uh, but a little bit of a slow start here. Jens, did you, uh, what do you make of that? Were you able to catch any of that, uh, that game? Unfortunately, play? didn't get to, to watch yeah. the games, but um, it, it's cool to see another tournament going on, yeah. even though there's, there's limited time in between sure. splits, uh, especially with the organization, some of the organizations being uh, at the major as well. And still everyone participating. It's not like uh, Complexity and Fury were in right. there. I mean, Fury won the whole thing. So, yeah, it's cool to see. Um, I I didn't really catch the game. So uh, yeah, <laughs> feels feels difficult to really say much about uh, how they played. Sure. I just I just saw the tweets, though. Uh, I saw, oh, yeah, I saw uh, those Jan too. Get, get really so spicy. You know, ooh, I mean, he is some. He, he can kind of, you know, Get some tweets out of his system that yeah. you know they're just there's some fire burning there and it, it needs to be needs to be put online it needs to be uh, shown so um, I, I feel like it was still all fun and games though sure uh, sometimes it's like a reaction to what someone has said like they feel like they're a little bit hard done by and then mm -hmm. some of the tweets can be a little bit like oh should you really do that but uh, now it was just. It, it was pretty fun. Uh, I think Royales as well tweeted when they he won uh, against Tennis. It was like, hey, he's my son. I, I, <laughs> no, I just babysit this kid. <laughs> he was probably Which typing was... that tweet with uh, with one hand, though. He, he was, got... yeah. Sustained yeah. an injury. Yeah, and he actually played through it, didn't he? He actually got injured during a football game before the event, before the qualifiers and everything, and played through it um, with, you know, with an injury. Uh, and then after that, he actually went to get it cast. So, wow. yeah, Ooh. hopefully recovers well. Well... Obviously, like you said, it's hard to uh, weigh in on the discussion about complexity and Diaz and, and whatnot, um, not having been able to catch it. But I, I will say this, you know, I don't think it is too surprising. And I guess this kind of, for me, also applies even to the dig situation. It's not too surprising to me that it may take a little bit of time to, to get things rolling and get that team chemistry rocking. And of course, we don't know, um, you know, off the field personality things. So that could be at play here with dig. I, I have no clue. Um, there's nothing that makes me believe that. I, I'm just saying that that is a possibility. Uh, but with Diaz, I think um, he's extremely talented. I mean, we see it in the ones arena, and I know that that doesn't translate 100%, but um, typically those players that have the mechanics to shine in ones, they eventually figure out how to um, use their ability in 3v3s as well. So I, I would not be surprised if it's just a little bit of a, a buffer period where they're building that team chemistry, raise both CRR, kind of have this system that they've probably been used to, um, and now they're going to have to make some adjustments, obviously, as Diaz is a quite capable individual. So maybe it's just something like they got to make some more space um, for each player. But either way, I, I still have full faith that Complexity Squad is going to be very competitive. I don't think Furia is, is going to lock things up three for three. Um, and, and it doesn't stop there. I mean, you have Ninjas in Pajamas, who I think throughout split one were definitely improving and, and um, continuing to threaten those top two teams a little bit more and more as the uh, split went on. And they uh, had a strong showing there in that tournament as well. They qualified through uppers. Do we think that there is a possibility that they could maybe um, catch complexity lacking? For sure. 100%. I think there's so many teams that have the talent, especially it's one of those things where it's like, ah, do they have like land experience? Like, sure. It, when Fury and Complexity moved back to Sam, my immediate reaction was they're going to feel this like kind of big brother relationship with the other teams in the region, where when it really comes down to game day, they feel as though they're going to beat the opponent, and the opponent probably feels as though they're a lesser competition than Complexity or Furia. But now that's kind of all out the door. Uh, we have a lot of teams with with talent who can be here. Furia feel like a lock. You can put them in Sharpie for me, especially after 
a pretty lukewarm major one uh, and they put it they were really online i think uh yan had the highest number of ranked games in the season leading up to that which was oh, wow. you knew that they were ready for it um and them having the finish they had i think that they're going to come back in full force um but you know who knows diaz and dorito what they're expecting from those players at least on paper seems like it's very different uh, diaz is more mechanical and create himself um when in the past they were kind of um not relying on dorito for the the same kind of thing consistently um, I think that this is an upgrade for complexity long term, but uh, you know, different play styles. It might take a little bit to uh, to gel, and uh, this might just be one of those things where it comes down to playoff matchups. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I do want to hit on one thing because you guys mentioned the injury, um, and then we'll jump to the the Mina Regional preview and and talk about the Mina Region as well. But Monkey Moon also has sustained an injury. He had a uh, a car accident. And um, I think something to do with the wrist. Um, he was wearing a brace or a cast of some sort as well. But, um, and while obviously I don't understand French, he was live streaming. He was playing the game. So it doesn't seem as though it's such a severe injury that he can't hold a controller and can't play the game. Um, and from what I'm reading on Reddit um, surrounding that stream, they translated some moments. It sounds as though Monkey Moon feels confident in his gameplay, um, you know, doesn't feel the, the need for a sub. and. Uh, it sounds as though he's going to continue to compete for BDS. So, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's I'll crazy. say, you know, uh, obviously we hope for the best for the players. We don't want anyone to face an injury, uh, whether it's traditional sports, esports, whatever. I think that the best world for all of us as fans is when everybody can play. You know, we don't mm -hmm. we don't want situations where one of your top ta uh, top teams loses a top talent. That is just bad for everyone. So, hopeful that that doesn't impact Monkey Moon too much, and and BDS can continue to roll on just like they did in Split One. Yeah, but it, it's crazy. To think about how quickly things can change, sure. right? One moment yep. you're just a lock for for every top qualifying spot you want to get, and a, an injury here or there can really throw things mm -hmm. completely in a different direction. Um, but yeah, it, it looks like he's doing well. Uh, yeah, I, I don't see them dropping down too much. It's still Monkey Moon, you know. That's right. Even That's right. even on game sense, he can win against some teams in, in the qualifiers. Extra saw the tweet. He was like, "Now's my time." He's like, "No, actually, I'm okay. I'm I'm good." He's I mean, like, oh. I did look up the rulebook again to just see what it says on substitutions because imagine it's not actually going that well during a tournament, and he's like, "Nah, I actually can't finish this series or something." Sure. Right? What happens? It actually doesn't say too much about it. It has a whole paragraph about um, disconnects and everything. That's pretty set in stone. If there's a disconnect, there's very strict rules on on how to get your substitutes in and when you can do that and whatever. Um, when it comes to health issues, it's actually, you have to scroll all the way down to chapter 14 or something. And then you see that when it comes to health issues, um, it's mostly up to the discretion of the admins, which makes a lot of sense because every sure. situation That's right. re regarding the health of the players or even the coaches or managers is going to be completely different. So you want to have some kind of freedom in your rulebook to say, yeah. well, this is asking for this situation, or we actually, now we can put in a substitution, or maybe this isn't really the most fair situation, something like that. So it, I think most of those rules kind of were written in a way that they mostly apply to LAN events, because then, you know, the health can be much more of an issue and it can be much closer, uh, closely inspected by the actual tournament admins, which isn't really the case if everyone's playing online. But it seems like if something were to happen with Monkey Moon or with Realis or if anyone, and they needed to make some changes, there is room for it in the rulebook. Yeah. Yeah. So I just do imagine you want to... Jens by candlelight with a glass of wine, like chapter 14 of the rulebook. <laughs> no, uh, no, yes, no. here's the section I was looking for. <laughs> Yeah, that, that sounds good. But no, it was a PDF <laughs> file, which I could control F on substitute. There you go. <laughs> That's funny. Find it right well, I just wanted, I wanted to mention that because obviously Monkey Moon is a, a beloved player and a very successful player and a, a big piece of BDS success. So um, just something to keep your eyes on. Well, let's jump over to Mina Regional Preview. We've got Rule 1 breezing through the qualls uh, while Twisted Minds go to 5 in their qualifying match. Um, what, I mean, there's all kinds of different perspectives, different opinions, um, you know, varying 
tweets and claims, et cetera, surrounding the decision to drop Ahmad and, and, and rather than Khaled. I think that is the big thing that everybody was debating about or curious about. Um, no one really confused, in my opinion, that Venom was the selection. I think there's a couple, maybe three or so players that um, probably would not have caused any ruckus from the community, but um, they, they went with Venom. But I think the thing that, again, everybody was confused about was the, the decision to release Ahmad and, and, and Yins. You've talked about this. There was some, um, maybe some discourse or a little bit of frustration internally, um, even while at the major. And so it seemed like there was something that was going to change. Um, and, and, and do we think that this is the right move? I mean, here it's just a qualifier, but uh, a clean performance from Rule 1 as they make their way into event number one for Split 2. Yeah, I mean, they still have the pedigree standards that they need to be at the top of the region and i don't think that's going to change anytime soon you have maybe bravado or twisted minds that can do something about it but uh we'll have to see where they end up on on the bracket side this is yeah. really really one of those cases where it comes down to where they meet is it going to be a quarter final it's going to be a semi-final um I'd rather not be the grand finals because they will if they make it there uh, it's going to be Team Falcons facing them if right. everything works out. But uh, yeah, it comes down to the to the other teams, I think, to Twisted Minds, to Bravado. That's that's where I'm looking at to see how well Rule One are going to do this split. Well, uh, we've also got Team ROC as well, the the young yeah. ones, Nush, um, Ops, and Doctor Known, and uh, obviously you mentioned a couple other solid squads there for Mina, but I think those guys. Um, you know, maybe we can start to throw them into that mix as well as far as being maybe not contenders for major, but one of those upset caliber teams, right, where they can maybe punch up and, and maybe give Rule 1 a loss or maybe give Twisted Minds a loss that they weren't expecting. Um, Belair, what do you think about this uh, Team ROC qualified for their second straight regional? Obviously a little bit of a slow start, but loads of talent on that team um, and a young, young talent as well. Yeah, seeing that momentum is big. And I, I think for a young squad like this with – so few spots are you really trying to contend for a major of course that's the objective sure, i think sure. no matter what as you ramp up i think confidence is key like you said if you can take a series or a couple of games off one of the big boys and falcons or roll one that's huge um, and also you know there's those teams that are just on that tier right below them um, that i think we could definitely see maybe not them consistently beat um, but over time take a, a, a series off of um, and and something sneaky uh, with with that venom move that I was just thinking about, as I said, bravado is roll one remove talent from bravado who was yeah. right on their heels. They kind of took the talent out of the team who was right behind them. So it's a, a, a sneaky good pickup for them. Kind of it's, and it's also there. it's not something that typically the community thinks about when you're making roster moves. Like you only think about like where is that player landing. But that's a good point to to bring up because in a region that has you know, just two, three, maybe four teams that are that are sincerely contending for those top two major spots. That actually does uh, that actually does go come into play as well. So you know, making your uh, one of your opposition uh, squads a little bit weaker while also you know increasing the ceiling and and maybe even the floor for your team can can be a huge difference there. So we'll see what happens over there in Mina. Obviously, um, all these events are going to be unfolding this upcoming weekend, the final weekend of April. Uh, I'm excited to see that. Well, let's jump over. We've got um, SSA Regional Preview as well, our final region here that will be competing this weekend and just went through their qualifier. And I'm going to say this wrong, but here's the name. Tesho. Is that Sounds close? good to me. I, yeah, I would go for Tesho. But Tesho? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But we've got the youngest ever player qualifying for RLCS. We know that this offseason, they, they, they dropped the uh, age requirement from 15 to 13, and we had... A 14-year-old in Scribbles. Uh, we had a couple other 14-year-olds, I think Nush and maybe Ops or, or Dr. Known. I'm not sure who, which of the uh, two were the younger, but a couple, a few players around the 14-year-old mark making events. Uh, maybe Sphinx as well. I, I don't know exactly how young he is. But we've got the youngest now, 13 years old. Yes. 13. That is this man, They're 13. That is so, so young and, and, and is making the RLCS event. I think that is... One, exciting for SSA, right? Like, we want to see that region continue to develop. We want to see new talent blossom, young talent blossom, and this is an example of that right there. Yeah, I mean, it, it's awesome to see. And uh, when Shift put out a tweet to, you know, 
to let everyone know about this spectacular young player coming in. Uh, he responded saying, I am truly honored. I dreamed that people were talking about me internationally. And this dream oh. is finally come true. Thank wow. you very much. So he's, he's ready to grind. Everyone is so supportive of his journey. I mean, it's great to see, obviously, when you're 13 years old, you don't really know what the future holds for you. I mean, not at any age, but especially not at 13. So where he's going to go within Rocket League, within his school life. I mean, imagine in a month he fails an exam and his parents are like, nah, actually, <laughs> you should focus more on your schoolwork. Literally anything is possible at this point. Sure. So I'm, I'm just happy that he gets the recognition for being a 13-year-old to <laughs> make it to an event like this. And I mean, it's good to see for the region because yeah. if there's anything that South Sub-Saharan our Africa needs its own talent, you know, homegrown yeah. talent, yeah. and and that's Desho. So, awesome. Well, Belair, do you think that uh, a player like Desho can can make the same kind of impact that a player like Sphinx did over in APAC in Split One? Obviously, I think at this point most people look at Sphinx as the number one player in that region, or at least um, that's from that region, right? We've got some imports, um, especially recently with Tho moving over, and he's obviously a very talented player, but. Do you think uh, someone like the show can make that big of an impact immediately in SSA? I mean, anything's possible, especially at that age. And, you know, admittedly, it's probably one of the regions I, I know the least about. Sure. Uh, I, I think one of the big benefits of a Teshao esque story is that when we're just inundated with so much Rocket League and there's so much that you, that you can watch and try and get deeper knowledge on, I don't always allot a lot of time or energy to SSA and kind of seeing, sure. but like a story like Teshao, I'm definitely going to be yeah, yeah. tuning in and seeing how he's playing, you know? So as they continue to progress and we get the imports, like we just had ZPS come over, who's joined a line of players who go to come, some of those emerging regions. Um, I, I, well, I definitely that's for think that... APAC, right? We've had sure. ZPS and Tho for APAC, but for SSA, actually, we have PK Salen from yep. European... Oh, yeah. As we kind of get these, style. you know, as you enter a, a different stage of your career and kind of move over to the to the these um, emerging regions, is is that the term that we've all landed on? That that's like the that. nicest minor region seems a little, um, but you know, it, it's it's similar to what we see in professional sports leagues, right? Like yeah. I follow the NBA closely. Commonly, what we see is as you enter the twilight of your career, we see a lot of players go over to play in Europe or play basketball in China. It's different but similar to what Messi did to kind of bring more attention and sure. eyeballs to the MLS. Um, so I, I think the movement of talent like that is great, uh, but to go alongside that, somebody like uh, Peshaw, I, I think is is a cool story to follow as yeah. we continue to see the region grow. Yeah. yeah, I really love your point too, where it's just another fun story for a, you know, a lesser served region, one that has never had an official broadcast in any sense. Um, and, and so, you know, it's just, I think, a, a little more difficult for the general community that may typically tune into NA and EU to find talent, find stories, keep up with what's going on in SSA, just because they, like I said, they have not always received that support that some of the other regions have. So things like that, fun story, brand new player, shift highlighting yeah. it, those kinds of things bring some attention to it. Um, which is exciting and, and obviously yeah, a, a positive for the region. If you're not having the organizations in there that you want to support, and you're looking for other narratives for other storylines, and the only one that really has been dominating SSA is their own players against the sure. incoming players from Europe, which hasn't always been the nicest narrative. You know, it, yeah. it has this little irky, little irk about it. That's like, you know, it's not. It's not always been great in the past sure. split. So it's really good to have this other story of young uh, players from South Africa, Guns, and from Réunion, uh, Tesha. So, yeah. Awesome. Exciting when stuff. I, well, that's going to... Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, when I think back on Major's past, like some of the storylines that I've been most interested in, a lot of them are... Maybe it's just the underdog appreciation in me, but commutator realize even yeah, yeah. Oh, the yes. most recent those are the ones that really get me excited so you know this is just a, a another feather in that cap that's right 
So that's gonna uh, that's gonna wrap up the regional previews. As I said, obviously we got four regions: uh, SSA, Mina, Sam, and North America that'll be competing this following weekend. Um, as I mentioned, the, the last weekend in April. Can um, I give one more shout out? Absolutely. To my boy Justice, actually making the regional yeah. in North America. Yeah. That's another some Dutch import. representation um, where I did not expect it. He yeah, he's playing CRL over here. Isn't that why he's over? Yeah. Today? Well, he's yeah. he's here for or there uh, for CRL and for. The RLCS, and now he's actually done something with that, which is, yeah, just awesome. I mean, he is yeah. a good player. Yep. Um, I just didn't expect to see a Dutch player on the field. I mean, we have Final Panda coaching, right? Mm -hmm. Actually, a lot of European coaching talent in yep. the in the re regional. You have um, Adam Baguette, you have Noah, uh, you have Final Panda, and you also TSM just picked up uh, Eclipse. So. There's a lot of European coaches. Yeah, absolutely. Alongside the uh, the growing number of European players as well competing in North <laughs> America. Um, but hey, we'll take it any way we can get competitive. That's what we need. So <laughs> right. that, uh, as I said, that's going to wrap up the regional preview. Y'all check that out this weekend. It's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you for watching. Uh, Shiftcast, this was a segment of the full episode. If you want to catch the full episode, check it in the live tab of our YouTube channel, or you can check it out on Spotify. Thank you for watching. Catch you next time.